Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can apply an image texture to text inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. So first let's add a text plus title onto our timeline. Under Effects, Titles, and then Text Plus, I'm going to drag this in. I'll click on the text and let's change it to say something more relevant, Tutorial. And I'll change the font to be more readable, so I'll make it Babis Noe, probably my favorite. And let's expand the size to something that's really easy to see on the screen right here. Okay, so now we want to apply an image texture to our text so that instead of showing white, we show some actual details in the form of our texture. So we need to go to the inspector, video, title, under text plus, we're going to look for the shading tab. And then you scroll down to where we have properties, there'll be type that by default is set to a solid color, but you can also change it to image and gradient. For this video, we want to do image because we're going to load an image file as our texture. So change image source from tool to clip, and then we can browse our computer for our image texture. So click browse, and then locate on your computer where you have the texture you want to apply. So I'll click on this asphalt texture right here. Okay, great. So our texture loads up, and by default, it may already look pretty good, but there's some settings we can also apply here to manipulate it a little bit. So first off, under shading mapping, maintain aspect ratio, it's going to take the texture image and it might resize the texture, but it's not going to change how stretched it is horizontally compared to vertically, which I think is usually what you're going to want, because if you stretch the ratio of your image, it's not going to appear as it was originally intended. You can see with maintain aspect that these rocks look correct. Let me zoom in a bit here. Uh, so if we had used something like stretch to fit, what might happen is that the rocks don't look correct, because in this case, it's stretching the entire texture to fit a single character. And that means that you can easily mess with the aspect ratio. Right, so maintain aspect is usually a way to keep it looking correct. Uh, but also to note with stretch to fit specifically, I just said that it stretches to fit the entire character, which is the default. So that's your mapping level. So when we're trying to fit the texture, we're trying to fit it onto one character, and then we have a new copy of the texture for the next character and a new one for the next character. So you can change it from mapping level character to word. And now what's going to happen is it's going to stretch to fit the texture across our entire word. So it's using one copy of the texture to show everywhere here. It's going to look a lot less stretched here because the texture probably naturally fits the size of this text a lot better than each single character. If I go back to maintain aspect ratio, then uh, just like before, it's still going to stretch the image, but it's not going to stretch horizontal or vertical more than the other. So it's still going to look correct in terms of the proportions of everything on our texture. Of course, with mapping level, you can keep going further. So if you do it by line and you have multiple words, then it's going to stretch the texture across our entire text line instead of a single word. So if I add an extra word here, and let's uh, shrink the text down a bit, then you can see it's not repeating because it's stretched across our line. But if I go back to shading and we have it at mapping level word, then you can see it starts here and then you have roughly the same parts appearing over here. You can see that it kind of repeats, but if I do line, then it's continuous. There's no cutoff where it starts a new copy of the texture. So then lastly, the mapping level full image is going to be stretching across our entire video frame. So our text might be smaller than our output video. But when we stretch here, it's just stretched across these borders. And of course, the only parts that show through are where we have the text as intended, uh, but it will be stretched a little further. So we can see with mapping level text, everything here is a little bit smaller. But when you have it at full image, it's stretched further, so the details appear bigger. So to go along with those basic sizing levels, you also have mapping angle, mapping size, and mapping aspect. So if you change mapping aspect, it's going to be changing how stretched vertically it is compared to horizontally. So even if you have it in maintain aspect, this would be messing with the aspect ratio. So if we shrink this down, then you can see it's compressing the Y or vertical axis. And if we go above 1.0, then it's going to be stretching it out further. Usually, I'll just leave that at 1.0, since having the texture as its originally intended ratio is just usually going to look better. 
um, unless you have some special cases. Uh, so mapping size, if we increase it, it's going to be making the texture details appear smaller because we are pulling the texture out further. So we're increasing the size of the details, basically, which can be handy. Uh, you might only want to be able to see like a couple of the little rock textures in each of our characters. So increasing your mapping size is a good way to do that. And it's worth noting definitely that you can go above 2.0 for the mapping size, even though the slider only lets you go to 2.0, but you can manually type 3.0, 4.0, or whatever you need. Uh, just know if you get too zoomed in on the texture by increasing the mapping size, then some of the details may start to get blurry. So there's a limit to that. And uh, that would be one reason why when you're grabbing texture sizes that having a bigger texture file is good so that even if you zoom in on the details, they still look pretty nice. And then mapping angle, if you want to rotate it, you can do 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees to rotate it on its side or 180 degrees to flip it upside down. Or you can go anywhere in between that if you just want to kind of change the angle at which you're mapping. So you can go 360 degrees with that, or you could just leave it as zero. Okay, so that's basically how you apply the texture to a normal text plus. But I also want to point out that you can use this on 3D text. So let's add a video clip here under the timeline. And I'm going to click on the video clip and go over to the Fusion page. And I will just add some 3D text right on top of this node graph. So we have the input output for the video clip. And now if I click 3D text up here, above the node graph and then render a 3D. Then this can be the 3D part of our clip output. And let's right click, add tool, composite, merge. And then we want media end to be the background, that's the yellow connector and render 3D to be the foreground green connector. And then we take the merge one and put that to the output. So if I type in the 3D text, something like texture tutorial, let's even uh, show this on the left preview window. Okay, and I'll split the screen there. Let's close the media pool. I can zoom out on this window with command middle mouse scroll. Okay, we can see our text in 3D here. I'm going to alt and middle mouse wheel to rotate it and then command and zoom in a little bit. So by default, our 3D text exists in 3D space, but it's not really 3D itself. So to give it more of a 3D effect, let's click on the text 3D and then go down to text and extrusion. And let's add some extrusion depth. So this is going to make it pop out, give it a solid object look. Okay, and it's gonna be a little hard to tell in the media output. That's this right preview screen, you can see that the right view for media out is showing over here. Uh, so what we can do is just add a texture on top of this 3d text. So I'm going to go to shading. And then down here, for 3D text, it's actually under material. So we want to change the material type from a solid color to an image. And then that pops open image source down here. So we go to clip color file, browse for a texture. In this case, I'll use this clay texture. And that's going to layer it on top of our 3D text. So let's rotate around on this left view and zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we can see how it looks. So you have less settings directly for the mapping. So you can change it to either character award mapping level. Uh, what you might notice is just when you apply the texture like this, that uh, the extrusion may not receive the material very well. It might not be that noticeable when uh, you have the final 3D output, like here. And uh, I'm going to actually move this 3D text back on the left window so that it will show better on the final media out over there. Okay, so we can see that there. Uh, but what you can do, if you only want the texture to apply in front and not on the sides is you can uncheck use one material at the top of the shading tab. So shading elements use one material. If you uncheck that, then now the sides are going to have their own material, in this case, a solid color. And let's only show the media out here. Now I'm going to zoom in on it. So if we just leave the bevel materials a solid white color, then it kind of looks like we have some drop shadow. And we could easily change that into a black color drop shadow by using the color wheel. So if we make that black there, uh, then now our 3D text has some drop shadow to it. And you can see that when our text is kind of centered on the camera, uh, we can't see the sides as much as when it's kind of further off to the side, thanks to the perspective. So we can definitely see our text is 3D there. And if we want more drop shadow, 
you can just click on text 3D, go over to text, and then extend the extrusion a bit more to make the text pop out even more. And now we have 3D text with texture in front. So that's going to be it for this basic tutorial on how to apply texture to your text inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. So you can see you can obviously do it with uh, text plus, but you can also use it on 3D text as well. So it can be a handy way to make your text a little bit more interesting than just having a solid color or a gradient. And if you don't like the texture, you can always apply a new one. So I might browse and let's try this kind of brick texture. It looks pretty cool now. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.